I'm building a tech startup. Except it's not really a startup, it's more just a project that I'm building myself, but I wanted to put the word startup in the title, so we're gonna go with that. Alright, put yourself in this situation. You just released a YouTube video, so you go onto YouTube to check how the video is performing. But you get recommended, why are 96 million black balls in this reservoir for the 84th time? So you finally decide to click on it. And two hours later, you're watching Flappy Bird, but RTX is on, and you've wasted two hours without even checking your analytics. The problem I'm trying to describe here is that when I go into social media with good intentions, Sometimes I just get super distracted by the addictive nature of the social media platforms themselves. The objective of this project is to take away those distractions from ever being available. The way I'm gonna do that is by extracting all of the data out of the social media themselves and displaying them on a non-distracting website where you can just focus on the analytics and the performance of your content. Now you can argue there are a few ways to already solve this, like just deleting social media off your phone, for example, but I've tried that a few times and then I go on an hour long train ride to work and I'm like, what the fuck do I do with myself? So here's where my startup solves that problem. Introducing upsocial.com. Ah, fuck. Introducing upsocial. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Upsocial.app. Upsocial.app. Please don't take that domain. Anyway. Unlike all my other projects that I don't finish, I actually put together a little plan for this project. I know, I actually put some thought into it before I started coding, which is pretty fucking crazy. I'm gonna take you guys through my exact plan on how I'm gonna build out this website, and you can see what you think. I'm gonna run you through the entire tech stack that I'm gonna be using for this project, as well as the entire database design of how it's gonna work behind the scenes and how I'm gonna extract the data from social media platforms to populate the databases. Then I'm gonna run you through the UI and what I've built so far of the website and show you all of the pages and how they're gonna to fit together so that a user can sign up and build a dashboard to start extracting the data out of all their platforms. Starting out with the tech stack for this project, I'm gonna be using four key tools that I think will enable me to build out this project as quick as possible. The four tools that I'm gonna be using are Firebase, Next.js, Material UI, and of course, TypeScript. To begin with, I'm going to be using Next.js for the framework because I think it's an amazing tool to work with and it just speeds up the development process so much. I've really wanted to do a project using Next.js and Firebase for a while since I think it's so insanely easy to use the two tools together to build out websites with really complex features. The only real downside here that I can think of is if the website does take off and I get a bunch of users, it's probably going to end up being a little bit expensive due to the cost of Firebase. I actually made a video recently about how to get started with this stack as well if you're interested in building something similar to this. Before we jump right into the details of how this application is going to work, I would really appreciate if you consider hitting the like button as it really does help out my channel and if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing as well. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Here's how it's going to work. A user is going to sign up either using their email and password or they can also sign up with social providers like Facebook, Google, Twitter, or GitHub. These are all authentication methods supported by Firebase, so I've actually already implemented them all. I just need to create a privacy policy if I want to finalize them for production. Using Firebase, you can literally sign up a user with one line of code. I made a tweet about this to show a function that I wrote that takes in the social media provider as a parameter and then signs up the user with that provider. So I literally have one function to sign up a user with four different social media providers, which I think is pretty insane. Once a user signs up, they'll have an account created for them, which is also gonna trigger a serverless function using Firebase Cloud Functions. This function gets triggered every time a user signs up, and it takes all of the user's account information and puts it in a document in the user's collection inside our Firebase Cloud Firestore, which is just our database. Once the user is signed up and we have an account created for them inside Firebase, they'll be taken to the dashboard page automatically by using the Next.js router. On the dashboard page, they'll be shown an empty dashboard initially, but they have the option to add a social media account to start tracking it. So they'll select a social media platform that they wanna add, and then they'll input their username on that specific social media, which will trigger the creation of a sub-collection inside that user's Firebase document. For example, if a user added their YouTube channel to their dashboard by entering the username, that will create a YouTube sub-collection within that user's document inside Firestore. All right, so this is where it gets a little complex, and I'm still not sure if this is the best way of doing it, but this is my plan. So each user can have multiple social media platforms associated with their account. For example, I would want to add my YouTube account, my Twitter account, and I'd also want my blog, which is hosted on a site called Hashnode. But each user's social media accounts have different growth over time. 
For example, I might have 200 subscribers today, but maybe I could have 205 subscribers tomorrow. So it's not as simple as just having a field called subscribers within the YouTube sub collection. I'll need to have multiple entries of how many subscribers that profile had per day so I can keep track of the growth over time. Then the site will need to figure out what is the most latest available data that we have for each social platform based on all of the data entries that we have inside the database. Not only that, I wanna track the performance of each individual piece of content that I put out. For example, I wanna know how many views each of my videos are getting each day. And in order to do that, I need to have data on how many views my video had on every date in the past. So we actually end up with this pretty huge database since for each user, they'll have multiple social media platforms, which can have multiple data entries for each date over time, and also have multiple pieces of content for each social media platform, which can also have multiple data entries for each date. So at the moment, this is the current structure of the database that I'm going to implement, but we'll see how it changes over time. The way that I'm going to populate these databases is using each of the social media's individual developer APIs. For example, the YouTube API has endpoints to get the statistics of a channel as well as the statistics of each individual video's performance. Twitter has a similar API to get the current statistics of a user and their most recent tweets and the performance of each individual tweet. I'm going to schedule a cloud function to hit each of these APIs and request to get the data of each of the user's social profiles as well as their most recent pieces of content and store it under their respective user collections. These cloud functions are also gonna be run on demand when a user adds their social username to the website for the first time so that we can display some data to them on their first visit. On the UI, I'll have an overview section where you can get a top level understanding of how many followers you have on each social media platform and Underneath that, I'll have a section for each individual social platform as well, where you can see more platform specific metrics, like how many views you have total, as well as content specific metrics for each of your most recent pieces of content. From there, you'll be able to see things like how many likes, dislikes, comments, or views that you got on each piece of content, as well as the growth of that content over time. So this is how the actual site's looking so far. I've just spent a few days trying to get the look and feel that I want, especially on this landing page, as well as the pages like the sign up and sign in page. So I got these graphics from a site called draw which is crazy how accurate they are to what I actually wanted as you can see we've got these social icons here I think it looks really perfect to what I'm trying to create we've got these little guys and girls trying to pick up social media icons and put them on a dashboard which is you know like literally exactly what I'm trying to do so I thought that was pretty insane but uh, if I go ahead and try and sign up let's say if I go Google here that's gonna take us to the actual dashboard page so if I exit full screen here you'll see with that we're on the slash dashboard route and all I've done on this page is grab the username once this little icon goes away grab the username of the currently signed in user so this is my account and pretty much what in theory I want is the overall followers of each of the social media profiles to appear here and all I've done is added this floating action button with a nice little gradient and then that brings up a pop-up which is going to give you the option to select which social media that you'd want to add so for example if I clicked on YouTube uh, the next phase will be I would need to enter my YouTube username, which would then in turn trigger the cloud function to go and get the data required to build out this dashboard for the YouTube platform that the user entered. So obviously none of that functionality has actually been implemented yet, but I think that's going to be the next step for me is to write the actual code to hit the YouTube API or hit the Twitter API and bring that data in a format that I can display it and continue working on the UI. I'll give you guys a really quick run through of the code that I've written so far. It's not that exciting as most of it's just the UI code. So it's pretty much just a lot of these material UI components like container, grid, uh, typography, and things like that. But it's a pretty stock standard file structure for what we've got at the moment. So we've got our components folder where we have all of our individual UI components. So this is one of the things you saw earlier where we were mapping out each social media into its respective icon, which is in this public folder up here. And for the rest of the code, we're initializing Firebase, writing a few authentication functions. These are all just the pages. So these are a few Next.js specific things, app and document, but all of these are pages that you saw earlier. So the home page, the sign in page, the sign up page, and the dashboard, which is pretty much empty at the moment. And down here, you can see we've got these types called social profile as well as content piece. Now, if you think about it before, we have these kind of similarities between social media platforms where every user is going to have a profile 
profile and every profile is going to have multiple content pieces. So I've created these generic types and then for each specific platform, they're going to extend those generic types. So for example, on social profile, we would have ID, uh, probably add username or something in here as every social profile is going to have an ID and a username. And then for the YouTube profile or a Twitter profile, that would extend this generic social profile and also add in platform specific things like subscribers is probably unique to YouTube. Views might not be unique, but obviously every social platform, you're not going to be able to get the views. So I'm adding that in this YouTube profile, but pretty much these types are going to be used to uh, define types for the data coming out of Firestore documents. Uh, so I would pull a Firestore document out and say, if it's from the YouTube collection, expect it to be of type YouTube profile. And then it would just be more type safe in my code base. Uh, less error prone if I can just expect these fields to come back from that document. Whereas if I was expecting it from the hash node subcollection, then I would type it as this hash node profile, for example. That's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please remember to hit the like button as it really does help out my channel. And if you're new here and you wanna see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel as well. Other than that, thank you very much for watching.